Today, we want to learn about a new C Sharp 12 feature, primary constructors coming with .NET 8 in November 2023. We will learn what primary constructors are, how to use them, and when to use them. Let's look at the following code. We have a version class with two private fields and a constructor that accepts values and initializes the fields. We also have a public version name property that contains a composed value using the value and the name properties. The code is clearly understandable and very explicit. It is what we have written for decades. But what if I told you, you can shorten the code and still get the same result? This is where primary constructors make a difference. In Visual Studio 2022 Preview, we already have a refactoring suggestion that lets us refactor the code to use primary constructors and remove unnecessary code. As you can see, the code is much shorter. Let's explore it in more detail. First of all, we have a constructor definition as part of the class definition. Of course, we can only have one primary constructor. That's in the name of the feature, but it also makes sense since we cannot have multiple parameter lists as part of the class definition. Next, we do not explicitly define private fields for the value and the name constructor arguments. However, we can access the fields in the definition of the version name property. Therefore, they exist. Using primary constructors allows us to eliminate the private field definitions. We can also remove the code, taking the constructor arguments and filling those fields. But what's the catch? There are two main restrictions. You can only have a single primary constructor per class and the constructor arguments become fields and not properties. If you want to have those fields publicly accessible, you have to define a public property and assign the values from the private fields to those properties. This takes us to the next question. Can we have additional secondary constructors? Yes, but those constructors need to call the primary constructor. Let's add a constructor with a single argument. As you can see, we get a compiler error telling us that we need to reference the primary constructor. What it means is that we need to use the this keyword and call the primary constructor. This forces us to provide a value to the name field. How does that look in a real world project? I quickly created a new ASP.NET Core Web API project using .NET 8 and C Sharp 12. Here we see a typical implementation of a controller. It has a few attributes on class and method levels, and it uses dependency injection to get an instance of the logger as well as the iWeather service. Including the empty line between the private fields and the constructor, it takes us eight lines of plumbing code. When we apply the primary constructor refactoring suggested by Visual Studio, the code gets much shorter. It now has a single location where we define the logger and weather service variables and constructor arguments. This example gives us the opportunity to explore the generated fields in more detail. The generated fields are mutable by default. It means that we can reassign a new value after the object has been created. Let's for example change the value of the weather service field within the get method. As you can see, there is no compiler error and assigning a new value to the private field is possible. That's something you have to be aware of. But what if we wanted the generated fields to be read-only? At the time of recording this video, it seems like there won't be an option to do that in C Sharp 12. The C Sharp language design meeting notes are publicly available and the last statement so far says that we will prioritize work on a read-only modifier for primary constructor parameters, including figuring out whether this modifier will mean read-only like it does for fields, 
where it is mutable during initialization or if it will mean fully read-only with no ability to mutate at all. This may not make it into c 12, but we will target early previews of c 13. And they also make it clear with their single sentence conclusion. Primary constructor parameters will ship as mutable by default and we will investigate the read-only parameter modifier shortly. Alright, we now understand that the generated fields are private and mutable. But what's the difference between record types and using primary constructors? Aren't those two different ways to achieve the similar thing? Let's figure it out. Take a look at this record version of the same type. The idea for record types is that we can quickly create data types with immutable properties. When we try to assign a new value to either property, we quickly find out that it's not possible. Another difference is slightly hinted at by the capital letters in the parameter list. When defining a record type, we start the name of a property with a capital letter because it is a property and not a field. It means that when we create an instance of the type, we can not only access the version name property, but also the value and the name properties. When we use record types, we have immutable properties. When we use primary constructors on classes, we have mutable fields. This takes us to the question of when to use primary constructors. As stated, when introducing primary constructors, I believe they add complexity. You can already achieve the same result, just need a few more lines of code. However, when you get used to it, it makes your code base smaller and cleaner. I will try it with my real .NET applications as soon as .NET 8 is released and my applications are upgraded. I believe I will first try it using dependency injection as shown as an example in this video. For data types, I usually use record definitions because I want my properties to be immutable. However, if I want to hide a property, maybe I will use primary constructors in the future to achieve it as shown in this video. In the end, I have mixed feelings about primary constructors being a new feature added to c 12. I believe that primary constructors will help you keep your code short, remove unnecessary duplications and generally improve the readability of the code. They will also save you from potentially adding typos in your code when typing in the same name over and over again. However, with GitHub Copilot emerging and IDEs improving more and more in regards to code completion, I doubt it that most developers will write the same variable name over and over again. Code like this will be generated more often than not. I also care about .NET developers that are new and want to learn c -sharp and pick up .NET development. They now have to go through about 20 different options on how to initialize objects, how to deal with properties, fields and whatnot. We already have classes, structs and record types. We can use object initializers and regular constructors and now with primary constructors, we have a new way to initialize an object and assign values. In the end, it does improve readability simply because less code is often simpler to read than a longer code segment. However, to understand the code, you have to know how primary constructors work, which makes it less beginner friendly. I'm really curious to know what you think about primary constructors and whether you're going to use them in your code or even forbid them in your code base. Please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more.NET content in the future. And I will see you in the next video.